Um, I'm Head of Communications and Engagement for Midlands and Lancashire Commissioning Support Unit. Um, it's a commissioning support unit that covers Lancashire and the Midlands, unsurprisingly, um, and provides support to 24 clinical commissioning groups across that area, um, doing all kinds of things around the edge, HR, employment services, finance, but the really good stuff we do in the middle, which is communications and engagement. So I'm going to take you through um, a journey that really started about five years ago in Staffordshire. We had this hospital called Mid Staff. You may have heard of it. And about five years ago, something started to emerge about care, treatment, um, and you'll all be aware of the public inquiry that followed. Um, at that point in time, about five years ago, there was an initial report that was done around commissioning and what had failed in terms of the commissioners commissioning the service from Mid Staffordshire. So commissioning is all about strategic planning, specifying the outcomes, procuring the services, monitoring the demand and performance going forward. Um, and the little boxes inside the circle are the points in time when we should be engaging with patients, talking to them about what are the health needs, where do we spend the money, what do the services look like, how can we involve patients in contracting and procurement, and how can we monitor the demand and performance going forward. So five years ago, I joined the NHS from um, a private sector background in customer service, um, and I joined something called North Staffordshire PCT, which was um, the organisation at the time. They talked a lot about public and patient involvement, and the door was slightly ajar, and the patients were there ready to be involved, but actually the organisation didn't have the infrastructure to do it. Over a period of time, we started to get patients much more involved, they got a foot in the door, we started to open the door and through this five, six year process we've actually managed to kind of remove that door and started to create a much more equal partnership. So patients, carers and the public were always at the heart of what North Staffordshire PCT wanted to do but we had the 2012 Social Care Act and what we tried to do as we turned into a commissioning support unit was make sure that parents, parents, patients, carers and the public were at the forefront of all the changes that were going on at the time. So at the time I looked after complaints, um, patient advice and liaison as well as public and patient involvement and we started to look at our complaints as a result of the, the initial inquiry into mid-staffs to think about lots and lots of intelligence in there. A patient might be complaining about one thing but they might tell you 10 or 15 other things in the letter. So how could we start to understand that and build that into some kind of insight database, which is what we started to do along with um, patient advice and liaison information. PALS were going out into the community, creating networks, working with voluntary sector groups, and we started to build up a membership scheme of people who were interested in health. They would register with us, and on a monthly basis, they would get membership newsletters and give us lots of intelligence. So what we started to do was triangulate the data that we were getting through complaints and PALS and then test it with the membership to see whether or not what was coming through as issues were actually issues. That then started to shape the public and patient involvement we did because actually we were now involving patients and the public based on what we knew from evidence were the issues for them rather than going out as commissioners and saying we want to talk to you about stroke services because this is our agenda. It was actually patients who were shaping how we involve patients going forward. So we started to put all that data into the one system, whether it was coming from PALS, the membership, surveys, public and patient involvement focus groups, patient participation uh, groups, or mystery shopper programs. We found that we got lots of data and we couldn't really make much sense of it, so we then started to think about standardised data sets using the domains of patient experience that would help us to theme and trend that information so we could start to see where the issues were and which categories they sat under. What we were able to do over time was then segment all that information that was going into this database and start to understand what patients were telling us from a domain point of view, from a sub-subject point of view, so underneath, the, underneath each of those domains are sub-subjects. And what you could then do was kind of segment the data by GP practice. You could start to see themes and trends across GP practices, wards, services, providers, even right down to kind of person level. So if there were, it was information in there about a particular consultant at the hospital or a particular GP, you could see the information. So the world changed and clinical commissioning groups came along. And at the time, the Department of Health said, don't 
kind of lose what you've been doing, keep what you've been doing, we'll give you a little bit of money, think about how you can set up a structure that will help you to take that information from the database and start to kind of feed that up from practice level right through to board level and back down so that actually the patient voice is driving some of the changes. So we've got the membership scheme. The membership scheme could be segmented into a virtual group that the patient participation groups could use and the patient participation groups at GP practices were actually then recruiting to the membership scheme, so it became a little self-perpetuating triangle. What we then started to do is think about, well, patients in a patient participation group are looking at GP practice um, issues, but actually we want to involve people in the commissioning cycle, in the broader commissioning issues. So we then set up some locality groups that allowed patients from the membership, from the local area, or from the participation group to then start thinking about commissioning. We then started to think about a strategic congress, we called them. It was a group of people who had a job description, were paid for the time, paid for the role that they were doing. They were, underwent an interview process. They did some exercises and they were recruited based on their performance and actually their reach out into the community. That was made up of locality reps, as well as Health Watch, local voluntary sector groups and third sector groups who would work hand in hand with the clinical commissioners, chaired by the PPI lay member, who would then report directly into the board. So the two um, systems, the insight system and the model of involvement, were actually feeding each other. The data from the insight system was going directly to the Congress, so they could challenge the CCG around what they were actually changing. Um, and all the interactions up and down the system were feeding the customer insight database. So the two models were working together. We used a system that allowed real-time dashboards, so um, dependent on the commissioner in a particular CCG, they could see the data about the service that they commission. GP surgeries could see the information about their, their feedback too. So we were able to use the information in the commissioning support unit in the clinical commissioning groups local authorities and public health also started to feed in. We started then to think about GP practices and the local area team for NHS England were also involved in bringing all that data together across Staffordshire. Um, we went from having um, three PCTs in Staffordshire to having six clinical commissioning groups and over time we were able to implement the same system across all the clinical commissioning groups and share the data so you could actually see on a health economy basis from a commissioning point of view what patients were telling you. We then started to think about, well, we're putting patient experience in there. We're also putting in social media, media complaints, patient advice and liaison. Stoke-on-Trent CCG then started to say, well, actually, GPs are a real source of information in terms of clinical effectiveness. How many um, ladies who are discharged in the middle of the night go to the GP practice the next day and say, I've got this funny little needle still in my hand or discharge letters don't come through or there are issues with films or radiology. So we started to think about rolling it out for clinical effectiveness data and safety data at primary care, bringing in the kind of three strands of quality then. So we were able to roll it out to GP practices in Stoke-on-Trent, 54 of them, and then we started to roll it out to other GP practices. So in Staffordshire, we've got nine clinical commissioning groups and 350 GP practices across Staffordshire, Shropshire, Telford and Herefordshire. We started then to work with some of the GP practices up in Lancashire, and we've got three of them up there and 88 practices using it. We've also got the NHS England um, local area team. We've got an out-of-hours provider up in Lancashire using it, as well as some condition support groups in Staffordshire. So the local mental health condition support group in Age UK also have access to the system. They put their data in. They can track exactly what they've shared with the CCG, and the CCG reciprocally share data with the condition support groups. So at the minute, we're talking with the Health and Wellbeing Board in Staffordshire and Staffordshire Health Watch about bringing some of their intelligence into the system. We've got four other CCGs in Lancashire that we're working with on the rollout with another 250 plus GP practices. We've recently, Lancashire and Staffordshire CSU have recently merged with Midlands CSU to become Midlands and Lancashire CSU. So we're starting to work in the Midlands with GPs and um, the quality department. 
We've got other condition support groups who are interested in coming into the system. We started also to think about how we can get some of the untapped potential in terms of intelligence from care homes. So we're thinking about that. And then there are discussions starting to happen with the CCGs with the providers about contracting to um, use the standardised data sets or ideally use the same system to really theme trends and activity across health economies. So it was about really coming into the NHS with a slightly different focus but using the skills in an NHS context and bringing together insight in terms of the database and the involvement structure to build something that together actually gave more than either of the two parts. At the minute we've got over 21,000 records on the system but each of those records could have multiples of those five domains of patient experience so actually when you times it and I'm no statistician there's lots of intelligence there much more than 21,000 records. In terms of the events we've rolled out we've got over 3,000 um, just a few figures there and I won't bore you with them all but 98% of, of the incidents that are reported at primary care have got follow-up action on them. All the events and feedback are reviewed over a 30-day period. There's over 1,200 users across the health economy. Over 600 hours a year goes into reviewing that data at CCGs and making positive changes. Um, results, we've changed loads and loads of services and I won't bore you with that. Anything from oiling a door at a doctor's surgery that was squeaking through to full service redesign but all being driven from a patient perspective. We've won some awards along the way and we won one last week that we're really proud of which was the Patient Experience Award. Um, we've also been doing some work around called Involvement um, and you'll find it on the web but it's a kind of platform to share some best practice in terms of involvement. Um, it started off as a project that covered the West Midlands, East Midlands and the East of England. Um, there's lots of blogs on there, there's lots of um, insights, lots of different people use it. So if you want to uh, get on there you can. We have a blog, um, no we don't, we have a web chat every now and again. Um, and going forward um, we're kind of looking at those strands of, of information. So it's been a bit of an uphill battle over five years because we had this big change of um, organisations and at times it has felt like we were kind of teetering on the edge of something really great and not quite achieving it and at times it did feel like people were kind of stamping on your fingers and stopping you bringing all that data together but we have kind of climbed the mountain but what we're now finding is as we get towards the top somebody thinks of a different way of using it, different bit of intelligence that can come through and it kind of snows and there's another little mountain to climb. And that's me.